All right, so welcome back to the channel. So if you if you watch my channel, you'll, you'll know that I did a video on this little Dutch military vehicle um, a couple of months ago. And uh, I had some corrections, obviously. You know, some people from uh, that watched it commented on it and told me I, I, I was calling it a DAF. It's not a DAF, it's DAF. Well, I pronounce it DAF, but then I got a comment from a guy who lives in the Netherlands and he grew up with these things. And he said it's pronounced uh, like how we say DEF. So I guess with their accent or how they say it, it's DEF. Um, how we say it, it's, I just called it DAF. But it's a DAF 66YA. So they made a DAF 66, it was like a family car. You could buy a sedan, you could buy a station wagon, I think they had a little coupe. Uh, but then this one here, in 1974, uh, the Dutch military commissioned them and said, hey, we wanna make a military vehicle out of it. So this one, it's a, the body's a lot different. It doesn't have a hard top, doesn't have doors. It does have uh, soft doors and it does have a soft top. Um, I don't have the soft top on it, just the frames on it right now. But I've done a lot of work to this thing. I'm going to do a separate video on everything that I've done to this thing. So as well as doing an overview of the controls on this car, I'm also going to do a road test. Um, it's a little quirky. There's a, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it drives like a car. It's easy to drive, but there are things that are slightly different than just driving a regular car. You know, one thing is that this thing has a CVT gearbox. So if you see the shifter right here, it's got forward, neutral, and reverse. So it only has the one gear. It has a centrifugal clutch, a centrifugally controlled clutch on the back of the engine that runs the drive shaft to a two-part transmission. There's a primary and a secondary section to it, and they're belt driven. And uh, they use uh, centrifugal force and vacuum to control how they work. Um, you can see lots of videos that show how, to, how that works that can demonstrate that. I'm not gonna go into that here, but basically what it does is you, you run the engine about 3,000 RPM, and then the car just it, it gradually speeds up as as you go along. It, it changes the way that the belts ride between the two transmissions, and you just go faster and faster. Um, now, the original manuf when they originally manufactured this, they stated that it had a speed of 70 miles an hour, uh, which is what, like 140 kilometers, 130 kilometers an hour, or something like that. It doesn't do that. I've gotten up to 55, and that's humping pretty good in this thing. Um, if you were really, you might be able to get up to 60 miles an hour, but you'd just be just winding this thing out. So um, it's really made to kind of cruise around 35, 45 miles an hour in that range. And it, it rides comfortably in that range. One thing that's really interesting about the way that that gearbox works with the centrifugal uh, transmission, uh, I, I got this comment from a guy, um, I'll try to pronounce his name. Uh, he commented on my last video on this. His name's Benjamin Pronk, and he said he's from Netherlands, and he, he, he uh, kind of told me how they pronounced the name of it. He told me the original name, uh, which I'm going to try not to mess this up too bad. I'm reading this off of the of my phone right now. Uh, Dorn Annenhanger Fabrik, and that's I guess the long name or the full name of the DAF or DAF company. Um, he said the one thing that's really cool about these when he was a kid, him and his dad would go out and they would go to the races for these, and because of the way the centrifugal gear back box works, they go just as fast forward as they do in reverse. So they would actually do races in these things in reverse, which I, would be kind of cool. I'd love to find some video of that. That'd be really cool to see that. Um, so anyways, let's get in the, inside the car right now. I'll show you the gauges and what the controls do, and then we'll take this thing for a ride. All right, first off, uh, you know, just for, for the ignition, you just turn the key on and it's got a push button start, which is pretty cool. Just hit that, she starts right up. Uh, well, she starts right up, a little bit of gas. It's got a cruise control right here. It's like a throttle control like a hand operated throttle control. So I guess in colder weather, if it doesn't want to idle, you can you can pump it up or maybe use it as cruise control on the road. I don't know. Um, but if, sometimes it seems like it wants to idle a little low, I'll just bump it up until the engine warms up. Uh, the choke is located right here, right next to the steering wheel. It's kind of hard to find. I didn't know it was there for a while until I got underneath here fixing an electrical problem. Uh, we got the headlight switch. We got the military type headlight switch. Windshield wiper control. This is a pump for the fluid, for the washer fluid. You just pump this to pump the fluid up out of the bottle onto the windshield. It turns on your dash lights. Uh, it's like a little 24 volt uh, power source for, you know, those 1966 or 1968 laptops they were plugging into this thing. Of course, it's from Europe. It's gotta have an ashtray, right? Uh, these are the controls to go from heater to defrost. There's one on each side. You got fan control and you got heat, you know, heat control for the heater. Uh, Here's a cool little reading light, little map reading light for the military. I'm sure it's because it's the military version so they can uh, read maps or whatever they're doing when they're out. I'm trying to be stealth in this thing. 
It's got this switch here, which is a hill descent control. So when I flip the switch on, you'll hear the throttle kick up a little bit. And what that does is it, it's a hill descent control to help, help uh, so it uses engine braking when you're descending a hill. If you notice, it kicks the throttle up a little bit. It does the same thing when you hit the brakes. If you hit the brakes, you hear it, you hear the throttle go up a little bit. And um, what that does, I think that's, I believe that's for the centrifugal belt system. So it speeds it up a little bit. And then it, uh, the way it works on the pulleys back there, it tightens the belt up a little bit. And uh, because otherwise, if you let the throttle, it, it breaks a little bit. But if you if you tap the brake just a tiny bit, when you want to stop, you really don't have to mash on the brakes. You just hit the brakes a little bit. You'll hear the throttle kick up a little bit, but then you'll feel it slowing down faster. And I think it's just because it, then it's not freewheeling as much on the belt. Uh, it creates more drag on the engine. All right, so the left stock here, it's not the, it's not the turn signal or the blinker. It's uh, That's your high beams, and then that's your passing light. I doubt you're gonna be passing somebody on this thing because it's not really a rocket ship, but that's got them. This is your turn signal, you know, right and left. And then uh, this is your horn. Just pull the stock towards the steering wheel. Okay, your typical parking brake and you've got your gear selector so right now i have it in reverse and all you do you just put it in reverse push the gas and you start to go just like an automatic transmission except except when you don't have your foot on the gas and it's just at an idle the clutch is disengaged so for forward you, you know you just push into forward and you notice it's still just like it's in neutral because the centrifugal force of the or because the clutch on the back of the engine is run by centrifugal force so once i accelerate the clutch will start to engage and it turns the drive shaft you know which sends the uh, power back down to the transmission in the rear all right so just give us the throttle and she starts to take off i'll just hold this throttle steady and she'll just continue to accelerate in speed you know until i kind of if i back off the gas a little bit and it'll quit accelerating um, so you really don't have to floor this thing to, to try to accelerate and to go. Um, obviously when you get on a steeper hill or the road's a little steep um, or you want to accelerate a little faster, yeah, you can give it a little more gas, but it seems like it really doesn't help a whole lot. It just kind of wants to be at that 3000 RPM. switch because that brake light switch is what triggers the vacuum control um, and, the thro and, the, and the idle on the carburetor so it gives it a little bit higher of an idle and it also works with the transmission to help slow it down. The real sweet spot for it to accelerate is just like maybe like 3200 rpm somewhere right in that range it seems like the best spot for it. When we get out on the next stretch here I'm going to try using that hill descent control and see if it helps with the braking. I can really hear the idle kicking up, and it's... I 
slow down a little bit. It almost felt like it disengaged the transmission a little bit, but I think it's just made it feel like it was in a lower gear, the way that it makes the belts work. It just kind of lowers down your gearing. to get on some real busy streets and maybe even freeways it might be uh, not the best car suited for that control and from what I know of the Netherlands it's kind of like a all flat but I guess if you're going on uh, go to war in Germany or something like that you get on some hills right 
All right, well, thanks for watching my road test video on this DAF 66YA Dutch military vehicle. Uh, this was, you know, it's made in 1974. Um, they're really rare. As far as I know, there's only two of these in the United States. And I was watching another video on just the, the regular family type uh, car of the uh, DAF 66. And it was on a channel, I believe the name of his channel is Twin Cam. And he's a guy in England that uh, does a lot of rare cars or older cars that are, that are in um, England. And he did a, a really informative uh, video on the DAF 66. I got some of my information from him, but most of it I did. Most of it I did get from working on this. And I got from the, uh, the Haynes manual that I found for this and just other research I've done. But anyways, if you watch his video, he's got a lot of information on, on the DAFs. It's really cool. So anyways, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button if you liked it. Even if you didn't like it, hit the like button. It doesn't hurt, right? Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And share these videos with a friend. Let, if you know anybody that's interested in cars or uh, anything like this, please share it with them. Hit the notification bell because then you'll know when I have other videos coming up like this XR311. I've already done a video on it when I first got it. And uh, it's almost done now. It's going to be going out back out to the owner pretty soon. And I have all the other military vehicles that I'm working on as well and my heavy equipment stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good night.